The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. Hi, my name is James Pavizian. I'm one of the attorneys at Farmley Law Firm, and today I'm hoping to prepare you for your hearing coming up with the Social Security Administrative Law Judge. There's three different formats for a hearing. There's telephone hearings, in-person hearings, and online video hearings. Each of them covers the same material. It's just how it's done that's a little bit different. If you have a telephone hearing, you and your attorney will be called by the Social Security Administration and you'll have the conversation like you have any other phone conversation. If it's an online video hearing, it's very much like maybe what you do with your doctors, where you click a button, enter some sort of web portal, or in this case, you'd be using Microsoft Teams, and you'll be able to see you, the judge, and your attorney all on one screen and talk to each other like you do your family, friends, or doctors through Microsoft Teams, iPhone FaceTime, or Microsoft Skype. And then finally, you have the old fashioned in-person hearing where you and your attorneys will drive to the hearing office, sit in a room with a judge who will hear your testimony and later decide your case. Regardless of the format of the hearing, what happens is exactly the same. The judge is going to listen to your testimony and using what you say, looking at your medical records, issue a decision sometime about a month or two after the hearing. Everyone at the hearing has their own role. You, as the claimant, as we call you in Social Security world, we call you clients, but the Social Security Administration will call you claimants, are there to tell the judge why you feel you can't work. The attorney is there to make sure that all your rights are protected, but also to present your case, either through testimony or oral argument, as to why you meet the definition of disability. And then the judge is both a in, in this particular case, like a prosecutor where they ask you questions, but also they are there to be the judge and decide whether you're disabled. They will be someone, whether it's in person at an in-person hearing or over the phone, typing on a computer, recording your conversation. And then finally, there's going to be a vocational expert who's going to help the judge and the attorney at the hearing understand how certain limitations impact certain occupations in the national economy. I want to take a little bit of time though, going over that, to talk about specifics of what certain people do. The number one question we get as attorneys when we prepare a client for a hearing is, what does the vocational expert do? Are they the ones deciding if I'm disabled? The simple answer is no. The vocational expert, like you, is simply a witness. They do not work for Social Security. A lot of them work for their own agencies, helping people just like you find work in the national economy. Others, work for insurance companies or uh, work for themselves where they do a lot of research for employers and the government. Regardless of their background, these vocational experts have a lot of knowledge about what it takes physically and mentally to do certain occupations in our national economy. With this knowledge, they come to the hearing so that we can ask them questions about how certain limitations impact not just your ability to work, but anybody's ability to work. For example, Let's say the judge believes because of all your illnesses and lim limitations that you would not be able to make it to work every day. They're gonna be able to ask the vocational expert how many days someone's able to miss and still keep a job. Or let's say because of certain limitations, you're just not able to keep up at the same pace as other people. Similarly, the judge can ask the vocational expert, you know, how much of a production rate can someone work at before an employer will say they can't handle it? Uh, finally, they can ask about how much jobs require lifting or sitting or standing. Even from a psychological standpoint, they can talk about how much time on task someone has to be able to stay on. The vocational expert, being an expert in the field, will be able to help answer those questions. But I can't stress enough, they are not making the decision whether you're disabled or not. Instead, whether you can work, do the jobs a vocational expert identified, always comes down to the judge. So what's their role? The judge is there to listen to you. They are trained by Social Security to listen very carefully about what you say about the things you can and cannot do. But I promise you, the judge will know a lot about you before they even meet with you. And the reason for that is because before they even see who you are, they're gonna read a lot, a lot about you in your medical records. 
I would say most judges spend several hours before a hearing, uh, weeks before the hearing, learning about you. They're gonna read about all your medical diagnoses. They're gonna look through all the notes that your doctors have put together and your attorneys have submitted. They're gonna read all the statements maybe friends and family have written on your behalf. They're gonna look at all the different forms that you filled out earlier in the process. Uh, they're gonna look at why Social Security denied you early on. So they're gonna have a very intimate knowledge about your illness, your treatment, and whether that treatment has worked. It's very important, therefore, that you understand that when you go to this hearing, you don't have to start from level one. The judge knows a lot about you. What they're trying to do at the hearing is hear in your own words why you feel you are no longer able to work in the national economy. Which leads us then to the attorney. The attorney is there to present your case. And uh, as an attorney, I've always gotten questions like, well, what are you gonna do? Like, are you gonna talk about this or talk about that? The answer is no. As attorneys, we can't be witnesses. We're not there to be a witness for you. Instead, what we do is we, we use you to tell the story we want the judge to know. All the attorneys at Parmley Law Firm are highly skilled. We've been doing this for a very long time. And there's a story that we want to tell through your testimony to the judge. So what we do is to tell that story is we ask you questions. Some of them are yes, no questions. Others may require you to say a little bit more about yourself and your situation. But at the end of the day, every question we ask is designed for you to ultimately end up telling the judge the reasons why you can't work in the most persuasive way possible. And then finally, we have the hearing reporter. You know, what do they do? Other than call you if you're waiting for the phone call or you maybe hear them type in the background, they play the most important role in all this is they document. They document what's being said. Because let's say you get denied. We at Parmley Law Firm will want to appeal it. If we appeal it, we need to make sure we have a good recording of what's being said. And that hearing reporter is making sure that happens. Now I want to spend some time talking about what the process will look like from your perspective. If you're being called, you're going to get a call from likely a number you're not familiar with. That's why it's very important to always answer any call you get around the time you expect Social Security to be calling you. If you're doing this by video, you will be receiving a link from Social Security to the email they have on file. Make sure you click that link about five to 10 minutes before the start date of your hearing, start time, sorry, of your hearing. Or if you're in person, make sure you arrive 10 to 15 minutes before at the designated address on your notice of hearing. When the hearing does start, the judge is gonna introduce all these people I talked to you about before, and they're gonna introduce themselves and give you a rundown of what to expect. Every hearing is a little bit different because every judge is a little bit different. But for the most part, what usually happens is the judge and or the attorney will first start off by talking about what's in your file, make sure everyone's on the same page about what's still waiting to be submitted, what has been submitted, or if there's any other procedural reasons that the judge may have to delay making a decision. Once that's taken care of, then the judge is going to talk to you about why you can't work. Some judges may not. They may just let your attorney present the whole case. But either way, you will be asked to tell your story through testimony. When that's done, the judge and the attorney are going to ask questions of the vocational expert, and then the hearing will be over. You will not get a decision that day, so please don't expect to leave knowing whether you've been found disabled or not. Instead, most hearing offices and judges will take about one to two months after the hearing to get you the decision. Now, these timelines are up for change. Sometimes it can take three months, four months. Other times it could be 15 days. But on average, we're looking at about somewhere between one to two months. When you get your decision, it's very important for you to call your attorney whether it's a good decision or a bad decision, so they can talk you through the next steps and make sure that your rights are protected. Or if you're approved, make sure you're getting all the money you're supposed to get. I hope this video has been helpful. If you have more questions about what to expect in your specific hearing, I encourage you to talk to your attorney and ask them about your judge or if there are any preferences the judge has about how things should be done so that you can be better prepared for your specific hearing. Thank you.